Well, hello, Glue Troopers, Max and Max's Models here, and we're starting off today's video with some pens that were sent to me by Mr. Weigart. And these were the property of his mother, who worked at the Warren, Michigan tank plant during World War II. And he has a couple other pens. He's not sure what they are, although one of them does say Reichsbund on it, so I'm assuming it's some kind of wartime German pen. The other one looks like some kind of unit crest but i'm not really sure what it is but i thought these were really super cool i've got them up on the shelf and when i get uh, my sherman tank model done those are going to be displayed with it so uh thank you mark i appreciate that today's work was a sort of kind of broke my word a little bit i said i wouldn't crack open any new boxes until i was finished what i was working on but this is a half exception the box was already out for the vietnam build and the only reason I brought it into my office, this is the Hobbycraft uh, de Havilland Caribou, was because I realized I'd cleared off workspace on my desk, but all of the other models I need to finish have to have a lot of painting done to them, pre-painting and stuff like this, and this kit did not. It's uh, pretty much, uh, except for uh, a little bit of black in the cockpit, it's going to be shot in all drab so I can build it inside without having to worry about running back and forth to the paint booth. With, of course, one exception, which we'll get into in a second. So when I opened the box up, I found that there was a de Havilland-8 in there. I'd forgotten about that. That was It was a two-in-one. The, the person, the glue trooper who sent it to me, actually put uh, another Hobbycraft kit in there, which is wonderful because a Dash-8 kit is a really hard thing to find. I used to ride around on Dash-8s all the time, so I'll get to that later. I wanted to do the Caribou for the Vietnam build. And my buddy, the late Donovan Henry, the gentleman that I bought the Mustang from, had been a crew chief on Caribous. So I got the airplane uh, out, inventoried the parts. The kit is pretty straightforward, not too, uh, not too many parts, which is nice. It makes for a nice, fairly easy build. Although there are a lot of tiny parts, uh, the detail parts, especially the ones that work so far, are the yoke, which has to go on the extremely, glued onto the extremely small control arm. Uh, the Havilands have uh, control pedestals that come up from the side and then go over the pilot's legs. Uh, DC-3, C-47 does the same thing. They don't come up between your legs on the floor. I'm not sure why they didn't stamp that as one part, but okay. Uh, that makes for a slightly more detailed cockpit, but very tricky to work with. One of the parts bounced off on the floor. Luckily, I found it. But uh, it was a trick, little tiny gray part hiding down there. But I got the cockpit assembled, got it installed along with the nose gear bay. And pretty much all you do then is put in the windows and glue the sides together. Now, this is something I hadn't seen before, and it's really kind of cool. This kit comes with a lot of the black striping already on the decal sheet. And that's great. It's a lot easier than trying to tape it off and paint it and everything. But it also comes with these red uh, strap decals that go on the windows on the inside and then a black blackout uh, decal that goes behind them because this airplane doesn't have a detailed interior other than a little bit in the cockpit. So if you ever look at the caribou, the only thing you can ever see through the windows is those red stripes. They go to the uh, troop seats. And it was kind of funny because I was thinking that's really a genius thing to do. But I don't like, uh, when I have aircraft like airliners have a lot of windows, I really don't like having to mask off every individual window. Uh, you, you, I don't have to tell you guys how tough it is. They want to pop out of place. Uh, sometimes you don't get them edged just right and paint seeps through it. It's just really a tedious thing to do. So the habit I've gotten into, a little trick I've picked up when you can, and I did it here, is take the fuselage half before the windows are put in and go ahead and spray it in color. And this is uh, the Tamiya Lacquer, I believe it was TS-5, all drab. And that's what I'm going to paint the airplane. That way, once you get that painted, when it comes time to mask off the airplane for painting, you don't have to do each window individually. You can just put one rectangular piece of tape over the window or across all the windows, however you want to do it. I do recommend that if you're going to do that, make sure to trim the tape off where there are seam lines because sometimes you can get a little paint ridge if you put on several more coats of lacquer and then you peel the tape off and the color matches but you have very distinct ridges. Uh, there are a couple of ways to sort of get around that but I found one of the easiest things to do is simply trim the tape around a seam line. Problem solved. 
but uh, that's what I plan to do with this. So I did take it out of the paint booth, put three coats of the all drab on it. But until it comes time to mask off and blast the whole airplane, that I should be able to build everything else here at the desk. I'm not sure if it's going to be wheels up or wheels down, so I'm leaving wheels down as an option, putting the landing gear bay in the nose and everything. But this kit's not super duper duper detailed, but it does have a lot of tiny little parts, and it should be a really nice model when I'm done. And I will uh, update reports on it as I go. I might put the decals in and the windows in tonight. Uh, I'm not really sure. Paint's had all day to harden, so it should be uh, ready to go. Probably use white glue to hold them in place. It's one long strip window, and that works out pretty well. On my, I've already pre-fit them, and they drop right into place. So this is the first kit that I've used this Mr. Cement Deluxe on, and it dries very quickly. It's almost like MEK. And it, uh, you got you get, when you put it on there, you got to get the parts right together, it'll dry out on you. But it bonds very quickly, it's sort of like using the quick setting Tamiya Ultra Thin. So that's where we're at right now with that. And uh, this is a 172nd scale, I'm making it U.S. Army to Havilland Caribou. And those airplanes, you go out and watch them on YouTube, they could get in and out of a tennis court, and that's a literal phrase, not a figurative one. So that's where we're at for right now. I go back to work tomorrow, so this will be the last video for a while. I want to thank everyone that made the live stream. So guys, as always, take care of yourselves and model on.